I think while Liam does that, I'll just give a, a quick introduction if, if that's okay. Um, so, hi, I'm Tessa, I'm a senior creative partner at Environmental Charity Hubbub, and I've been running our food programmes over the last six years. Um, for a bit of context, our food work's really been focused on increasing access to more sustainable diets through sharing information, making doing the right thing quite appealing, or creating new spaces or services. And um, this has involved working with corporates right through to communities so that we can reach a really broader audience. Um, most relevant to the conversations today has been our work with community kitchens and community fridges, which are really aligned with Marta's vision of food centres. So um, I'm joined by Liam today, who's just come on board as our new community fridge network manager. Um, so he'll be expanding on what a community fridge is, the impact that they have, and they how they can kind of support a transition to food hubs. Um, so yeah, I'm joining today really because I'm interested, um, but too so I can pick up on any questions. So. Thanks to Martin and Co for inviting us along today. And I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Liam. Uh, I don't know if you went, I don't know if that was your internet or mine then, but I'll, I'll take that as my cue. Um, thank you, Tessa. So um, <clears throat> this is going to be a quick presentation. Um, I suppose a little tour of Hubbub um, and then the Community Fridge Network, um, which for those of you that don't know, uh, is one of Hubbub's first and most renowned projects, um, which aims to tackle food waste while supporting communities across the UK. Um, and for those that aren't familiar with Hubbub, um, we're an environmental charity who inspire ways of living that are good for the environment. Um, as Tessa has alluded to, we do this by tapping into people's interests and by designing campaigns that are desirable, aspirational and relevant to everyone's day to day lives. Um, and this is done with playfulness and positivity. So it's not it's not done um, in a way that makes people feel bad. Um, so in order to do that, uh, we meet people where they're at. And, and that means that the work is themed around people's interests and daily lives. And that's the food they eat, the clothes that they wear and the homes and neighbourhoods that they live in. Um, so, uh, in terms of the work that we do, um, actually, do you know what? I should have gone to that one, sorry. Um, in terms of the work that we do, the, the way that we approach this is, um, it, our work is based on research and insight in order to know what will make a tangible difference. And um, we believe that collaboration is paramount in order to making change um, at the pace and scale that's needed. And so we work with corporates right through to community groups uh, to make sure that we're getting our message to the right people. And our approach fuses smart design with behavior change theory so that we, we can learn fast, fail cheaply and openly scale what works well, um, as you'll see with the community fridge. So um, I'm going to assume that, that some of you will have heard about the community fridges, but for those that haven't, um, I suppose they're, they're an easy way um, for good food to go further if, if you were to shorten it that much. But um, for Hubbub, a community fridge is a space where anyone in the local community can go to share and access surplus food, learn about food growing, cooking and access a whole host of other local services. We first trialled the community fridge back in 2016 in Derbyshire as part of our work with Sainsbury's Waste Less Save More campaign. And at the time we were looking for ways to try and tackle food waste at the local level, which it's, it, so our approach was successful. Um, but we were seeing all of this food come from businesses and households um, and whilst we saw schemes in other countries like Spain and Germany there weren't any in the UK at the time so we were interested to know how creating a free network with full support resources and guidance could help shape the development of, of the concept over here in the UK and so four years on um, I think almost five, um, we have over 140 community fridges in the network. You have to excuse, I've, I've not updated the slide, but at the time that was 110. So we're developing more year on year. Um, and in the early stages, when we were developing the pilot, there were initial concerns around food safety, um, but we worked closely with the FSA and with Sainsbury's food safety team to develop robust food safety processes, um, which we could enable which we use to enable the groups to have confidence to to be operating their fridges safely 
Um, as I've already mentioned, the, the trial was successful. Um, the fridges were used by a whole host of, of local residents in their community. And um, more and more businesses were coming on board to support the, the, the growth of the movement and allowing food to go through, through their fridge. Um, and the group themselves wanted to do more. So they were looking at things like recipe cards and how to, to provide household tips on reducing food waste at home. Um, as the years, as, as the months went on, um, there was growing interest from businesses, local authorities and community organisations. And that's, that formed the start of the journey and where we are today. Um, so while we have 140 in development, um, sorry, 140 fridges that are launched, we have 50 more um, that are in development. And these are all across the UK and they're managed by teams of dedicated volunteers um, from organisations, each who partner with their local businesses to support the reduction of food waste. So in terms of our offer, the network's primary fun function is to support any individual or group to start um, and run a community fridge. Although we do also support groups that are already open, um, but, but who want to formalize um, and uh, join the network because of other benefits that being a member provides them. So uh, we support groups with step-by-step -step guidance on how to operate as safely as possible um, and, and encourage them to to follow the process so that they can provide a main a welcoming friendly ethos to all their visitors um, but as part of being a member and i'll go into some of the other um, benefits as part of being a member um, they will acknowledge that they're part of a peer-to-peer -peer network so it's really important for them to share their learnings their impact um, and to uphold the high standard that we set so we provide training um, often this is through webinars um, but we also uh, maintain all of our online resources that they can download and this is everything from how to manage volunteers to um, food safety questions man managing and maintaining your fridge finance fundraising um, and we also have we provide access to an online forum um, and pre-COVID we were organizing uh, physical meetups but at the moment we obviously have had to pause that um, and lastly, we form partnerships with various organisations to try and support the network as a whole. One partnership in particular is with um, LIBA, who um, with this partnership, it enables us to provide either free or heavily discounted fridge appliances. So I wanted to touch upon the future of the network, but I couldn't do so without mentioning Food Connect. Um, which is a service that we've piloted to tackle the final mile challenge in food redistribution. So using electronic cargo bikes and a van, we take donations of surplus food from local food businesses to community groups and other charities and organizations. Um, since the pilot was launched in September um, last year, we've uh, saved over 120 tons. And I think the average is about five tons per week of uh, surplus food being redistributed. Um, so we developed the model because we were hearing from fridges that getting food from the retailers was a, a real pain point and it could be a burden because many of these organizations were volunteer run um, and the hours of collection varied massively from store to store. Um, but we've been working in the pilot very closely with organizations like Fair Share and others. Um, and although I won't go into too much detail about that, um, I, it's worth highlighting that through developing this uh, this pilot we've now uh, improved the quality and the quantity of, of surplus food that's available to households so finally what are the next steps of the network um, we're delighted to, to announce that we have co-op on board as our headline sponsor um, but please keep this confidential for now because we aren't announcing the partnership until the middle of may um, the co-op are going to be um, working with us um, to support the opening of the next 100 fridges within the network. And this will also help us um, to backfill uh, the demand from, from groups who are interested, but they didn't have the financial means um, to open up at the time. Um, and it also allows us to open up in new areas. Um, again, I want to stress this is confidential. Um, so if you can keep this, this strictly between us for now, but um, it's a really exciting partnership.
um, that alongside opening new fridges, it, it should allow us to develop an online platform, which will uh, allow us to enhance the peer to peer side of the network. Um, we want to enrich the quality of the onboarding experience for new groups and make sure that they, they're fully supported and really foster that, that platform for um, the, the peer to peer sharing aspect, which, which is so important. Um, and as you can see, this is a quick map of the existing and prospective community fridges. Um, so the last point I wanted to make is that while the community fridges continue to grow, we're mindful of growing at a pace which fully supports um, groups at their own pace and keeping that, the personal touches alive. Um, so in essence, we're set not only on improving the quality of the fridges in the network, but also the quality of their offer. And in many cases, we see um, the future of, of the network involving many of the fridges becoming food hubs, which we've already touched upon in this, this uh, session. Um, so this could be things such as formally off, formally growing the offer of uh, grow your own allotment style schemes, cooking lessons uh, and workshops and so much more. Um, so watch this space, I suppose. Um, yeah, thank you uh, for listening and for your time. And between me and Tessa, I'm sure we'll be able to answer any questions.